What's up guys? Today we have another Nationals US Nationals video where we're gonna be covering the Dark Ride Garbodor uh Garantina deck. They actually got fourth place at United States National Championships. So the deck is really cool. Um it was really hyped to go into the tournament because it got three top eights at Origins that had been doing well. It had really underformed in Canada Nationals, but Canadian Nationals that people didn't really know what was going on. And it ended up being kind of risky, so not very many did well, but one person who did win well obviously got top four, so I'll be looking over his de deck. This is a deck that I thought was going to do pretty well going into Nationals, but I also knew it was kind of risky, so I'm not sure if I would have played it. It rolls around Darkrai with the attack Dark Pulse. It does 20 damage, plus 20 for every Dark Energy attached to all your Pokemon. Now you see these DCEs. I actually messed up. They're all uh, they're do supposed to be double dragon energies. So let's fix that really quick. Um, so the purpose of the deck is that although uh, double dragon energy aren't necessarily dark energy, they count as dark energy because they count as any type of energy. So you can actually power up your Garantina with these four double dragon energy, and it's, and then that makes it so every double dragon energy you attach is 40 more damage to, to fuel the dark eye. So while you're attaching manually these double dragon energies to the Garantina, you can max elixir and look at the top six cards of your deck and if you find a basic energy you can attach it to one of your bench Pokemon. So you're feeding your you're feeding your bench Pokemon your max elixirs while attaching the double dragon energies to Garantina. So you play Two eye dragon just to retreat more easily, and it also has a great attack. Shred shred does 80 damage and doesn't it's not affected by anything, so it goes through things like Reg Ice, which is really useful, and I think Jolteon as well, and so that's really nice. You play one Latios just to donk. I mean, if you start it, if you start Hoopa or something, and then if you start something and then you Hoopa into it, you can switch and then. You're good to go and you win the game right there. So, and that's the next card is Hoopa. Hoopa is super huge in this format and in this deck specifically. It's really good. Basically, it sets you up for the rest of the game and you don't really need anything else. So, it's really good. Two Shamans accelerating to your deck. Pretty standard. And then he decided to play one Ladi, uh, one Yotal just to, um, I guess, like an, uh, a Red Ice or things like that. You can Darkness Blade for 100 damage. And also, Oblivion Wing is a good attack to recover energy if you need it. And it's a good one prize attacker. And so, I guess he didn't play Garbodor. That's really interesting. Now, I think, like, I really thought about it. And I realized he didn't doesn't play Garbodor. And that's really crazy to me because Garbodor does help with a lot of matchups. But I suppose he figured I just don't need it at all. So that's crazy to me, but like I, I, I didn't really think about it. But now looking at the list and realizing there's no Garbodor, wow. So Garbodor was a really good inclusion in the deck that I think wasn't necessary. But I guess he, he figured he'd rather like taking up some lines, do some other things, said some other nifty tricks, and he didn't need it. So like I said, Max Elixir is super important. As well, we have three Trainers Mail t to run through the deck, four Ultra Ball. Four VS Seeker, all really good just get resources. One Izzy to heal a Pokemon. It's a good one, you have a lot of damage on you, you just want to get off, it doesn't really matter if you discard the energy. One Hexmania, want to get rid of your opponent's abilities. I guess if you just chain Hexmania, it's, it, it was as good for him as um, Garbodor. Two Lysander to fish out your opponent's Pokemon. Three N, controlling your opponent's hand, and if they get ahead of you, Making them so they have a low hand size, even though they might have a better board state, the low hand size is really good for, good for you and bad for them. Four second one to run through your deck, and he plays two parallel city, which I thought was interesting. Uh, you're gonna want to use this for the mainly for the side that you have three Pokemon, so you can discard your Shamans and Hoopas to so the other side. And basically, what it says is that um, if you put it that way, then it, it's too. Then you discard your Pokemon until you have three Pokemon. So that's really good against your Quasar, which had won the Canadian Nationals the previous week. But it's also good for you because you can get rid of your Shamans, your Hoopas, any easy two-prize targets. 
but one fighting fury bill just because you get 40 more health and 10 more damage and it's huge card is absolutely amazing two floats zone just to retreat things out of the way I, I really like when I played the deck before I, I really ne needed floats zone a lot so seeing it included in the deck is no not a surprise and it's really good you can't always rely on hydragon one muscle and sometimes you need an extra push of damage and then you play four double dragon energy and uh, ten darkness energy and then to round out the deck I'll just look over the two enhanced hammer that I saved it for last just because I thought it's an interesting inclusion it's probably for all the decks with special energy that really like, that needed to be tamed a little bit like so the Vespa Queen variants, the evil tall things and anything with like fighting uh, strong energy this slows it down and really helps you in the matchup so you can accelerate it while they're they're like losing energy they're struggling a little bit so I think enhanced hammer is super good and super clutch in this deck so I'm just gonna jump into a game right now after this brief cut okay, so we're playing slow Pokemon arm ought so he's, my opponent's gonna choose who goes first and whether we go for a second or we're in a fine position this deck can actually attack going second so the, on our first turn so even if we go second we're, we're still fine we're at a huge disadvantage but this hand is pretty ba awful so we'll see what happens so I'm gonna start Shaman unfortunately not our ideal starter and it looks like we're playing into Alakazam deck I'm very excited Alakazam is a really cool Pokemon with a really really cool ability so I'm gonna see what kinda I'm, I'm hoping to see some cool Alakazam shenanigans for my opponent so I'm gonna take that mulligan. Hopefully I can draw something good. I don't, unfortunately, but he also is in the same misfortune that I am with this terrible starter. So and we have a float zone to retreat. So as long as we get like an ultra ball or something and start accelerating our hand, we're in a fine position. We just need that ultra ball to get us going. And so we can get that from a trainer's mail or an N or something like that. We have a ton of outs to that get that one ultra ball we need. But as long as we hit it, we're in a good spot. So we just need to hit it. So he's going to train his mount into a Sycamore. And let's see if he plays it or plays some other cards. He's going to play an Ultra Ball first. Probably going to grab an Alakazam or Hoopa for three Alakazams. And dang, I think he has to discard. Yeah, he's going to grab a Hoopa, get a few Alakazams, get a Shamans, things like that. He actually has to discard two Devolution, so he turn one. That is really unfortunate for him because that's his main source of damage and he really needs to use that like well. Okay. So, yeah, so he's gonna get two Alkazans and one Mega Alkazan. That's kind of. I'm surprised that he's getting a Mega Alkazan. Sorry, I just yawned. Um, I'm surprised he's getting a Mega Alkazan and coming to a Skylar. Um, Skylar turn one. However,. I mean, I guess the deck is re um, relies around doing that damage, so having a turn, a slow turn one is also fine. Okay. So it looks like we're a pretty awful start right now. Um, I'm going to attach energy to Shaman. And then what I'm going to do is actually play this down on the other side. No, on this side. So that he can't bench any other Shamans or any shenanigans like that. So and now... If he wants to play his game out, he has that, but he also has two useless Pokemon that he can't get rid of. So he can't play any more Shamans or anything like that, or any more Alakazams as well. Until I start knocking things, some things out. So that puts me in a good spot right now. Uh, he's going to Skyla. He might get a Dimension Rally. I'm not sure what he's going to do. At this point, I'm just stalling to see if I can top deck something good to get myself back into the game. But this buys me a turn. That's what it is. It, buying me, it buys me a turn. I have an extra turn. To feel myself out, feel, see if I can have any chance. And if not, I'm going to lose the game or I'm going to scoop. So, that's what's happening right now in this situation. So, he's going to use Kinesis twice. I'm going to get 40 damage onto me. I'm fine. I can take that damage. I, I can retreat, AC, Sky Return, etc. So, I'm, I need something now. And, alright. Holy crap, we got our top deck. So, I'm going to hoop up. Say yes. Grab Garantina. 
Dark Rite, Shaman. And yeah, so hopefully this can help put us back into the game, right? So I don't need that much damage to be able to knock out uh, Shaman. So I'm gonna actually conserve that energy on the the Shaman. That that 20 damage, every 20 damage is important, right? So I'm gonna attach that here, and I want to attach a Double Dragon to Garantino because that's gonna help power my attack up. So I, I need to hit that. Max elixir or supporter for max elixir right now, or else we basically lose. So we don't hit it. However, what we do hit, I don't think I support it here, right? So I know I don't. But what we do hit is actually um an ultra ball. So I, I'm gonna grab another shaman. Oh, it's prized. <laughs> okay. All right. Even though it's prized, oh, we can actually deal with that. It's fine. I have to be a bit optimistic here <laughs> because this is honestly really rough. So I'm gonna grab a Hydreigon. And let's see how many so it takes So leaving this Alakazam uh leaving this Pokemon of Darkrai up here uh Shaman up here is bad because it's gonna get a ton of damage onto it, so I'll just leave this um, dark right up and I'll, a VS Seeker Lysander onto Hoopa so at least now it's harder to get back into the game while I can start accelerating so even though I missed this turn which is really unfortunate I can start attacking next turn and he's gonna play Sycamore okay that's fine uh, as long as he has no way to attack like he has no damage onto my regular board he has it forces damage onto his my shaman. So I'm I think I'm in a good spot right now. Obviously um this attack of Zen Force can power up really quickly because if he has sixty damage you freaking knock me out. However as I have no damage on my Dark Rai, my Garantina, any of my big resources, I'm in a good spot. So he's gonna de evolve. Uh, he can't re evolve for the next until the next turn. So oh my god, okay. So he, I was I considered conceding at the beginning, but I figured, hey, I can actually make a comeback here. I can get back into this game somehow, and so that's what I did. And so now, now I'm in a really good spot. I'm like doing well, and now I'm going to use Dark Pulse for a huge 140 damage, and I'm going to knock out the Hoopa next turn if I want to. And so that's kind of why you don't give up, guys. You kind of keep playing against the deck. I figured I'm playing against an Alakazam deck. This is a cool deck I want to show off. And so now from starting from nothing from a Shaman start and a dead hand. And now I just won the game. However, I think that's not a super cool game. So I'm going to show you another game after this. But just know, guys, don't give up. Keep playing out your games, right? Because you can you can come make that comeback. You can beat your opponent. All right. I'll be right back in a second with another game. All right, we're back against Trainer Geo for our second game. I'm gonna call the coin flip. I'm gonna call heads. And wow, we actually get heads. <laughs> it doesn't happen that often. So I'll, I'm gonna start first. Starting first is usually good. So when you can set up, get your good turn one, and kind of go off. This hand is all right, but I'm glad I'm starting with Garantina because that means that I can I can use my Max Lickers onto my Darkrai and start powering it up. And I can also put my double dragon energy still onto my Garantina. So this that kinda kinda grabs cheap wins. And okay. So Regice is kinda hard to deal with, but that's why we have our uh baby Ulthal. And also if I can go off early enough, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a good time. So I'm gonna bench this dark right. Throw this here. Um, Hoopa for probably Hydreigon, Shaman, and I think another Darkrai. And that's a perfect, uh, that's a really good hand right there. And so, even though I don't need the turn one attack, so it doesn't matter whether I get that that well of a good of a start. So I'm just gonna uh, try and just hope I get like a max elixir. And yeah, I do. That's really fortunate. I could also choose to get a Sycamore. 
I'm not sure how much I'm risking a dead hand. I think a max X is the right play. Because I can, I'm probably going to hit something. <laughs> uh, so, I'm going to get a dark energy, throw it onto here. I'm actually going to attach a float zone onto here. Shit, instead of a four, I'm optimistic that something, I'm going to grab something good. And yeah, I actually do get the <laughs> Sycamore. I really, I really was expecting to get unlucky here, but I, I do get the Sycamore. And I'm gonna jump into the, go into, hmm, I'll retreat into the Hoopa. That way I can still get my max electrician again, while also maybe throwing this onto the, uh, there next turn. So I'm in a really, really good position for turn two. I can attach my uh, double dragon energy to my uh, Garatina, attach my max elixir onto my Darkrai. And it looks as if we're playing a water toolbox. And this is an interesting matchup. The red dice kind of runs the show here. But if I can do some interesting things, I can probably beat out my opponent through the uh, use of Uotal. So, looking through my deck list, I see that I don't have any way to actually get back my Pokemon. So, hmm. I don't really want to throw a Uotal yet, yet this turn. So obviously, this is a threat. The red dress is a huge threat. So with the, if I dark balls right now, I'm doing a hundred damage, which is not enough. However, if I attach this here and get a max elixir, then I knock it out. So that's what I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna go for the max elixir, and if I miss it, I'm in a bit of trouble. Okay. So I'm going to hope for it off here. And I actually do hit a max elixir. I'm like, I'm always surprised when I get a little bit lucky. <laughs> because I suppose I have a poor mentality that I'm, okay, never mind. Yeah, I'm never lucky. Alright, so we have to acknowledge that this is a bad situation. Um, but what I can do here is that even though I'm in maybe a little bit of a poor position, I can Chaos Wheel, and now my opponent can't play any Stadium or any DCE, so we can't resist the Blizzard's next turn anyways. So there's no way of getting around Chaos Wheel until Pokemon Ranger comes out. So right now, he can't play his uh, Rough Seas or anything. He can go for the Paralysis. And if, if I get he gets heads on that, that, that will stump me. But I'm just going to hope... Is it like Lysander? Okay. I'm just shaman. That's interesting. Because if I get an AZ here, I'm in a really good spot. So. Yeah, I, I, I'm supposed to use a dead hand. If I wake up here and I'm in an amazing spot. Alright. Wait, no, he missed it. So. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I completely saw that wrong. So, Ice Beam does 30 damage and flip a coin. If heads, your opponent's active Pokemon is paralyzed. So I was not never paralyzed. Alright, so that's really great for me that I'm not paralyzed. I'm really happy about that. I'm going to attach this here. Retreat. Into there. Into my Giratina. And now I'm going to start doing 100 damage, right? I'm going to start putting a ton of pressure onto the bo his board. I'm going to do 100 damage every turn. No stadium. You, you have no nonsense a a way of um, getting out of damage. And so I'm going to keep it, uh, throwing that pressure on. He can't play any stadiums, any special energy. No, uh, he plays no special energy anyways. No fighting fear will to delay your imminent doom. And, yeah, so I'm just going to run my train against my opponent. Unfortunately, having, actually having the float zone makes it so that I can't use a muscle band onto my opponent. He's going to chill inside, it's going to buy him a turn. That's all right. That's really good for my opponent. I have all four of of these DCs in uh double dragon energies in my hand, so I'm actually gonna attach one onto my Hydreigon, so I can re uh power up Darkrai's attack and also um use Shred if I need to use it later. I'm gonna stay asleep. Kind of unfortunate. However, um statistically I'll wake up. However, that's not always, that's not always the case when it comes to like. 
uh, the uh, experimental probability. So theoretically, I will wake up. Experimentally, I will not wake up. So he's gonna chill inside. Doesn't really matter. I'm already asleep, and I'm gonna stay asleep. All right, that's unfortunate. But if I wake up the next turn. I'm gonna be in all right spots, and then I'll probably let Lysander out Glaceon. So I'm just gonna pass the turn because I have nothing else I can do. I wake up. Uh, he might use Chilling Sigh again. He might. Uh, I think he'll chill Chilling Sigh over Tri Edge, even if he has a Water Energy. He's running really dead here, so he's kind of in top deck mode. I'm not sure, but yeah, he just acrobiked. It's a pretty strange card to play in a Water Toolbox. So I could. Oh, he's gonna get his bird chest. Fortunate for him, and he's gonna get hit. All right, so he's gonna not be in top deck of morning wind. That's really good for him. And so he's gonna try heads. Hopefully, he gets a few tails. And wow, that's really unlucky of him. I feel kind of bad for saying that. Um, so I get a max elixir. It's good for me, and I miss again. All right. <laughs> Because if I didn't miss, I could have gone off. I could have done a ton of damage, knocked him out. So I'll Lysander up that Glaceon. And I'll do my 100. Start putting some pressure. I've been really unlucky with Max Elixir. Usually you don't get. It's not this bad. Because of like the amount of like darkness energy you put into the deck makes it so that like most of the time you'll get one. I've just been getting really unlucky with how my dark energy have been going. So. That's fine. I mean, I'm in an all right position. I'm not complaining. Like, so even even if you are in these bad positions, you're like you're still able to overcome them through um, just like pure aggression of Chaos Wheel. His rough seas does nothing here because I'm gonna still do 100 damage next turn, and he can't play any Fighting Fury Belt or anything to boost his health. So unless he gets a Mana Fee and an Energy down, this Glaceon's going down, right? So I'm in a good spot. I can shred if somehow my Hydreigon gets knocked out. He's gonna delinquent me. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure why he would even discard his rough seas, but I'm gonna discard Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball. And. I mean, I don't think I need more than one Ultra Ball at this point, so I'll discard three <laughs> Ultra Balls. Shaman, I can see. The reason I didn't discard Shaman is because I can see Shaman being useful at one more point in the game. Um, I can't see myself needing any more Pokemon, really. I have all everything I need. Maybe one more Giratina, but I already committed the, a double Dragon Energy to this Hydreigon. So, I'm like, I'm all in here, right? So, I don't, I'm not sure why he'd even attach that energy if he's not going to do anything. I actually do hit the, um, energy, but I'm going to, I'm not going to show my cards, right? This is kind of what I want to I show you guys. So I have the dark energy, but obviously I've been whiffing this dark energy for way too many turns, like a lot of turns. So if I show it now, it's absolutely useless. So I'm going to keep this lock up, and if he doesn't bench anything else, he's going to be like, oh, Pokey Packs in place is going to do 100 damage, right? But I'm going to show him, no, I'm going to do a lot more than 100 damage. And if he doesn't do anything and me, or um, kill my dark Rider right now, I'm gonna win that game right now. I'm gonna it's like, I'm, I, or he doesn't bench something else and and start setting up something else. I'm probably gonna win next turn. And even if he does, I mean, he's dead drawn like all game. Yeah, he benches a Glaceon, but at this point, I don't really think it matters. Um, hopefully he can't do 130 damage this turn. He'd need, uh, yeah, he'd need three heads to knock me out this turn. Uh. Okay, so I don't think he knocks me out, even with 120 damage. No, he doesn't. I live with 10 HP. That's really lucky for me. And now, <laughs> I'm gonna run my train. I'm not gonna like. I'm not gonna let him do anything at all. And so I'm gonna put this down. And so now he can't take any cheap prizes off the Hoopa, the Shaman. And I kind of want to keep the Hoopa because it has the float zone. Mm. But I'll, I'll discard it anyways, just because I have my Garantina with the float zone as well. Maybe I should have, I probably should have retreated maybe, and then I could have discarded the Garantina. 
However, this is a fine position. I'm in a really good spot right now, doing a ton of damage. 180 knocking on any Pokemon that he can probably bring up. And I have my Fighting Fury Well stuff in my deck. I have my Muscle Man in hand. Double Dragon Energy in case he pulls any crazy shenanigans. And I still have a fully powered Garantina. So even if he knocks out that Garantina, I can still do I can still uh, attach a double dragon and a muscle band back onto my uh double dragon onto my uh Hydreigon and a muscle band onto my Darkrai and still do a lot of damage, right? So I'm in a I'm in a good spot basically regardless of what he does here. He can end me he can get a lie center onto my Garantina. Like I said, this is not a huge deal. Right. I can I can still recover from this. I still have a lot of stuff I can do from this, and I'm still 2k KOing him at this point. So, yeah, I'm still in a great spot. So I'm gonna muscle man here, double dragon here, and he's gonna scoop. He's, he knows. He can see I'm doing so much damage, right? I'm doing, at that point, I'm doing, uh, 80, 100, 120, 100, I'm doing 160 damage. I was 10 off. So, those are two pretty good games that I think show off the power of the deck. The brute force, you can just get going so quickly. And even though I might have had the, a bad start, like the last game, and he, he might, have, I might have had a bad start this game, I just went off. I didn't let my opponent do anything. And, and fortunately, I won the game. So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow, actually, because I'm going to make a new video tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.